falling rocks, blood strewn faces, screams for help. You see a young child, she's covered in blood, crawling from under a rock. You grab her hand to pull her out, but she is trapped. There is no way out. Scenes like this are commonplace when a disaster strikes. Hi, good morning fellow CNM students. My name is Jasmine and my team and I are presenting on Team Rubicon, a disaster relief aid organisation. I will now walk you through some of the organisation background and the situation. My team will then continue to share with you on our research and campaign. But first, who is Team Rubicon? Now, TR is an American based non profit organization that involves military veterans in providing disaster relief work. They are constantly faced with scenes like the one I shared at the beginning. This map shows the geographical areas of TR's current operations. As an international disaster relief organization, TR is always on the lookout for countries to help out in. So we see that there are few operations in Asia or Southeast Asia, and this is indeed a place to work on. Why? Well, this slide shows 1,098, the total number of disasters that happened for the past 30 years. Now let us just picture this for a moment. 400 floods in 30 years, that is an average of a flood in one month. You have a mere two to three weeks to recover before the next flood strikes again. This goes to show the high incidence of disasters in Southeast Asia. Despite this high incidence, our research found that many things are still lacking in disaster management in Southeast Asia. Seen in this slide, there are two main reasons. Current relief efforts lack the capacity to assess the situation and have little coordination with local governments. The high incidence of disasters, coupled with the lack in capacity of current relief efforts, presents an opportunity for TR to step into the region. TR will then need a good base in Southeast Asia. In this map, we can see that Singapore has a strategic location in the region, with close proximity to provide immediate disaster response to Southeast Asian countries. Additionally, Singapore has resources. Now, in terms of resources, I'm talking about two main groups. First, the NS men who can be volunteers to be deployed to the disaster areas in the region. Now, why NS men? We wish to carry forward TR spirit of using military veterans who have the skills and the expertise to carry out disaster relief efforts. Since national service is conscription based in Singapore, it gives TR a large pool of military-trained individuals to tap into. The second group will be people to donate to funds for disaster relief. Singaporeans are found to be very generous. According to the Singapore Business Review, Singaporeans have donated $8.5 million to charities through the online portal SG Gives in 2012, despite a slowdown in economic growth. A proposed campaign will then target these two main groups, Singaporeans above 18 years old, who are citizens who have served or are currently serving the military, and are capable of making independent decisions when it comes to donating. Now, in order to understand the target audience better before planning the campaign, our team has collected primary data by conducting both qualitative in-depth interviews as well as quantitative surveys. The reason why we did both quantity and quality research is because there, there is insufficient secondary data for us. Firstly, we conducted in-depth interviews with a sample size of 15 individuals. The objective of the interview is to identify factors that will influence the interviewee's attitudes towards volunteering for humanitarian aid and giving. We followed the functional motivation theory as it follows through the motivation of volunteering itself. There are six functions in this framework which we use to construct the interview questions. 
The results from the interviews were then used to create our campaign. For the interview, we categorized our interviewees into two groups. Out of our 15 interviewees, 11 of them had voluntary experiences, while 4 of them had no voluntary experience. Social function was mentioned in both groups of interviewees. They also mentioned many factors that would prevent them from volunteering for humanitarian aid. Also, one key thing to point out is that both groups mention a sense of disconnection with victims from disasters, since there is no natural disasters in Singapore. Currently, most of the interviewees in both groups are donating money to credible organizations. They feel that it is the most easy, convenient, and direct way to help the needy. Most interviewees also feel that humanitarian aid deployment would require a range of skills. And some of them also said that what they learned from the army can be easily transferable to survive in disaster areas. Next, for our quantitative research, we conducted an online survey with 250 respondents. The survey aims to understand their awareness of TR, their communication preferences, and attitudes towards humanitarian aid and giving. As you can see, 3% of our respondents are aware of Team Rubicon. Now, this is despite a high awareness of other humanitarian aid organizations like Red Cross and many other at 64%. Therefore, TR must raise their awareness in Singapore. Next, look at their attitudes towards volunteering and giving. About two-thirds of the respondents are willing to volunteer for humanitarian aid, while almost 80% of them are willing to donate for disaster relief efforts. Out of this 80%, 85% of them are willing to donate under $100. Now, when asked about their communication preferences, the top three media channels that our respondents mostly use are Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Currently, they are hearing volunteering opportunities through their schools, word of mouth, and Facebook. Despite that, our respondents state that they would like to be contacted for volunteering op opportunities through social media and email. I shall now hand over the time to Kena to continue on our research. Thank you, Jasmine. So for issue tracking, we have identified five issues that will potentially affect TR Singapore and they follow the SEED framework. So out of these five issues, the top three issues are social, economic and environmental. So for the social issue, in our analysis and an article from Straits Time show that NSMen are open to participating for humanitarian relief work. Several articles published in Today also talk about how NSMen can help in region building. In the recent National Day Rally, the government has also institutionalized volunteerism in the Youth Volunteer Corps. Therefore, we can expect future Singaporeans to have greater inclination to volunteering. Economic issues showed that the fiscal cost of natural disaster varies and is unpredictable. At the same time, our issue tracking also shows that there is a culture of giving in Singapore. This means that fundraising initiatives by TR will not come as an unexpected surprise to Singaporeans. The environmental factor generally favours the operation of TR in Singapore. Despite being nested in the midst of Southeast Asia, Singapore is well shielded for the virtue of its location. Therefore, Singapore can better focus on helping the region. So on the whole, our issue tracking shows that Singapore is a good base for TR to extend their disaster relief network. Moving on to our culture report, we found a lot of things from our culture report, but what we found very relevant to our campaign is on the giving scene in Singapore, and how Singaporeans work to raise donations together. And this is also in line with our issue tracking. Therefore, with this insight, we can plan our campaign better to suit and reach out to our target audience to set up a volunteer base in Singapore. Because we believe that Singapore provides the necessary relief resources for more timely and effective disaster relief in the Southeast Asia region. We have also done our SWOT analysis. Some of the more relevant analyses will be that TIA has established a quick response for international disaster, the various opportunities as Singapore has the relevant resources of NSMEN and active participation in fundraising, and a threat of general lack of awareness of TR among our target audience. But for our campaign, we have decided to use the SO pairing by using the strength of TR to exploit the opportunities in Singapore. 
So to sum it all in a sentence, PR can take the opportunity to tap into this large pool of military trained personnel and capitalize on Singaporean generosity to contribute to the funds for disaster relief operations in the region. Therefore, our goal of the campaign is to build and maintain PR's presence in Singapore in order to recruit volunteers and amass donations for PR relief support in the long term. We have five objectives, and our first objective is to increase the awareness of Team Rubicon and its opportunities for humanitarian aid among the Singapore community above 18 years old from 3% to 10% by, by March 2015. Our second objective is to, have, is to have 10% of the Singapore community above 18 years old identify the plight of victims in natural disaster by September 2014. Our third objective is to establish T are as an credible disaster relief organization amongst 10% of the Singapore community above 18 years old by May 2015. Our fourth objective, to recruit 120 volunteers among a pool of military trained individuals in Singapore for TR's volunteer base by May 2015. And lastly, our fifth objective is to collect at least 300,000 worth of donations among the Singapore community for TR disaster relief efforts in the region by May 2015. So with this, let's move on to our campaign proper. Our campaign will be called Operation Transformer. And our slogan is, From Compassion to Action. This campaign message aims to convert their compassionate feeling into behavioural actions. And this is our campaign banner. So in our first objective, to increase awareness, we have two strategies. The first strategy is to launch Operation Transformer through traditional media. So we'll be sending out media kits such as our press releases and posters to various local media outlets like our local dailies, such as Lian He Zao Pao and Straits Time. Our second strategy is to create and maintain a social media presence, and we'll be doing so through various platforms, such as our TR Singapore website, which is a branch of TR's main US website. There will also be TR Singapore Facebook page, Twitter account, and YouTube page. So it was fun in our research research mentioned earlier that our respondents felt a sense of disconnection with the victims. Therefore, our second objective is to allow Singaporeans identify the plight of victims. Our strategy for this is to let Singaporeans experience what it's like to be in a natural disaster. So firstly, we'll kick off our campaign with a chalk art special event called Hashtag SG Disaster Art. This will be a publicity stunt and 3D stimulated disaster zones will be painted on pavements in five different locations to depict the disaster scene. So this will be something like what it will look like. So passerby can actually interact with the chalk art and use hashtag SGDisaster for their social media pages. So this aims to drive traffic to our online platform and create awareness and buzz. So these are some samples of our chalk art posters. So next, we'll also hold a disaster team challenge called the B Dash in collaboration with Safra Army Half Marathon. So this will allow participants to experience what it's like either as a rescuer or a victim in a disaster. So now I'll pass the time on to Elizabeth to continue. Thank you. Thanks, Kader. So now let's move on to Objective 3. And here we want to establish the credibility of TR among Singaporeans. So we want to do that by maintaining media relations with bloggers, as well as journalists, to align ourselves with their credibility among their Singaporean audiences. We also seek to establish partnerships with Mindef, to leverage on their platforms and reach out to the NS men, and register with SG Gives as an accredited charity organisation. We believe that having such official endorsements will boost the public's confidence of TR. So for Objective 4, we seek to have at least 120 volunteers sign up for our humanitarian aid missions overseas. And our strategy is to do both online as well as offline recruitment. Our message adds on Go the Distance to our campaign slogan, which encourages the behavioural action of volunteering in addition to feelings of sympathy alone. So first up, we have our e-recruitment portal, as audiences have expressed a desire to be contacted via online platforms for volunteering opportunities. So here's a screenshot of our portal, and volunteers can choose to join a specific mission. They can also register in our generic volunteer pool, where we will contact them via SMS, just like how Mindef does with its NS men whenever we have a mission. So here are some examples of our recruitment posters, where we encompass the message from compassion to action. Secondly, we will also hold a physical recruitment drive. So what a relief is our volunteer recruitment come donation drive. And here, we chose to go with an offline medium to better reach out to members of the general public, whom the entire event is catered for. So for this objective, we will focus on the recruitment segment of what a relief. 
So sign up booths will be set up for people to volunteer in Heartland Mall such as Amokyo Hub and Parkway Parade. And this drive is set to take place for two weeks in October and December every year because these two months present the highest frequency of natural disasters. Objective 5 looks at raising at least $300,000 from our fundraising efforts. So once again, here is our message and it is built upon our current slogan and we have added on every bit counts. So as mentioned by Jasmine earlier, Singaporeans do give, but they give in the small amounts that they feel they can contribute. So we actually want to affirm this effort and stress how every bit counts. It is not the individual amount, but rather the community effort in fundraising. So we have an e-donation portal, and there are three ways for members of the public to donate. Firstly, members of the public can choose to give to current missions that they would like to support. And clicking on the mission, we'll actually open an information bar like this explaining the details of the mission. Secondly, they can also choose to give general donations, where money will be used for administrative matters and allocated to donations for future missions. Lastly, they can also choose to give gyro donations. So here are some examples of our e-donation posters, once again encompassing the message from compassion to action. So now let's move on to the donation segment of What a Relief. We'll make use of large-scale models like this donation well, which will encompass every big counts. So the goal here is for the water in the well to reach the brim, and donations from the members of the public will cause the water level in the well to rise, giving them a visual representation of their efforts. So here, the concept is to pull together the community to fundraise towards a common goal, and this has been designed with insight from our culture report. So let us now sum up our tactics to the timeline. Here are the three main drivers of our campaign. Firstly, SG Disaster Art, which will happen in June, Debris Dash, which will happen in September, as well as What a Relief, which will happen in October and in December. The proposed budget for our campaign is 40,000 Singapore dollars. And here, you can see that a good amount has been spent to secure skilled chalk artists for our realistic 3D chalk art event in order to generate hype and kickstart our campaign. Next, moving on to evaluation. Firstly, we will conduct awareness surveys and we hope for 500 respondents to indicate their awareness of TR. Next, we will conduct interviews with participants of Debris Dash as well as SG Disaster Art and aim for at least 10% of these respondents to identify with the disaster victims. Thirdly, we will also administer credibility surveys to gauge the credibility of Team Rubicon in Singapore. Fourthly, we will monitor if we have reached at least 120 volunteer signups. Similarly, for Objective 5, we will check if we have raised at least $300,000 worth of donations. In conclusion, in order to establish and maintain a volunteer base in Singapore, we suggest that Team Rubicon raise its level of awareness and credibility amongst the Singaporean community. So why Singapore? Singapore has been chosen as an ideal volunteer base because of its close proximity in the region to provide immediate disaster response. In addition, it has a large population that can contribute as volunteers for disaster relief missions as well as raise funds for relief support. Our campaign message, From Compassion to Action, encourages behavioural actions in addition to feelings alone. And we'll reach out to these target audiences through traditional print media, outdoor media as well as online media to ensure coverage across all demographics and media preferences. Although Operation Transformer is set to last for only one year, we recommend that tactics like Debris Dash and What a Relief be held regularly to maintain continuous engagement with our target audience. Our team believes that such continuous engagement is key to establishing a strong profile of Team Rubicon in Singapore. We have now come to the end of our presentation. Thank you for your time and attention.